on the very plus side, I was able to get across one of the worst missions out there, or stages, that is. That one Rook stage, that was one of the most excruciating experiences in a uh. Sonic game. Like, it's right up there with the spinning barrel in Carnival Night Zone. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, like your, already... your mortal enemy, the spinning barrel in Carnival Night Zone. <laughs> well, Fang, you don't know about that, do you? I mean, I've seen the memes, but I've never been here for you to to re when you encountered it okay. for the first time. I wasn't here for that. All right, let me put it this way. In Sonic the Hedgehog 3, so it's a side-scrolling platformer, there's a stage yeah. in Carnival Night Zone. It's cluttered with... It's a very circus-themed one, so you're going to hear... Da, 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 and it has, like, its own remix or something <laughs> like that. Anyway, during Act 2, you stumble upon a corner where you're stuck in a room, and there's nowhere else to go except for the spinning barrel. And this whole time, you're, like, bouncing on and everything. Nobody could figure it out because it was often seen as just an obstacle or a platform. And it mm. often, like, moves on its own and such. There's a, a separate video that explains it better than I do. But you're stuck there, you're bouncing on and everything, and most people thought maybe you just bounce it down because there's a corridor underneath it that goes through a different pathway. The ceiling is blocked off, The you can't backtrack because that's blocked off, you're at a dead end, you have nowhere to go, you're trapped. So oh, okay. everybody was just like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? What's with this barrel? Like, what is this? Like, there were no strategy guides back then that explained it, not even the manuals explained it. Eventually, the developers actually admitted fault in this that, yeah, they didn't elaborate this very well. So, most people would just have the strategies bouncing on and moving around all the time to the point where you finally are able to reach down below if you work with enough velocity. And even then, that is extremely difficult and very time-consuming. Mind you, Sonic does have a time limit. If it reaches 10 minutes, you lose a life. Yes. Yeah. So, almost... 90% of people who played this game fell victim of this, and it was a notorious obstacle. So, um, as of um, apparently what you're supposed to do is that while it's still moving in motion, so you wouldn't notice this even if you tried it or had the thought of it, you're supposed to stand on it in the middle and just press up and down, and it shifts the weight. Uh, so... Yeah, that's a, little con that's a little contrived, and all of this you're trying to you're trying to figure this out in the me in in the meanwhile while in the background the music is just like yeah, it was an absolute like it is one of the most gaslighting obstacles ever made, and the developers didn't even know it, so. <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, oh god, we are so sorry, we didn't know better. <laughs> so yeah, apparently you're supposed to shift the weight by pressing up and down on the D-pad. Nobody would ever figure that out because in Sonic games, you don't think to look up and down or use up and down. You go forward because speed. It's Sonic. It's supposed to be a plat straightforward platformer game. Not. It's not supposed to be Metroid. You know, there are a couple of games in the history of video games where they would force you to use a mechanic that has never been used before. I remember when, like, GoldenEye came out on the fucking Nintendo 64. And you you know the Nintendo 64 has a muffed up controller. It is it is going to go down as the weirdest design for a goddamn controller in video game history. So, in GoldenEye, sometimes you would use the D-pad, but that nobody would use the D-pad because your hand was either on the middle prong or the or the right prong. The D-pad yeah. is on the left prong. So in order to fuck with the D-pad, you had to switch your whole hand position, and by the time you did that, an, 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 an enemy would just shoot would just shoot the shit out of you. So, yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but um, I've also mentioned earlier, there's a there was somebody from uh, the Sonic fandom. He goes by the name of Cyberpunk, and uh, okay. he's kind of notorious for this. He also has a big reputation of everything else. Like there, he has his own following and everything, but. I personally mm. hated him for the same reason that a lot of people took issue with his argument on the barrel. He literally uh -huh. stated in a Let's Play, and he said, This barrel is so fucking easy to figure out. I don't know why you're all so retarded. Running around on it doesn't do anything. Jumping on it doesn't do anything. So you'll have one option, up and down. And what do you know? It fucking does something. <laughs> like, uh, no, dude. If you bounce on it, people will have the impression that you have to use the velocity. It was not clear. 
I figured it out as a fucking child. Okay, good for you. Put a gold star next to your name. Don't go looking down on other people. Like, you're a dick, dude. Calling everybody yeah, else stupid, like... so apparently I'm retarded for not being able to figure that out. Yeah, this seems like in like one of those arguments where it was like, I was fortunate enough to figure it out, but because I am fortunate enough to figure it out, I deem everybody else stupid for not being able to figure it out themselves. It seems like yes. one of those kind of That arguments. is beyond gaslighting. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, pure arrogance right there. It's It's pure arrogance, and I hated him for it. Like, he's that one person who just goes and shits on everybody else because he was the only person to figure out a notorious obstacle that everybody else had. Like, there was an obstacle that I had to figure out in Wario Land 3, um, one of which was, like, a passage that was blocked off by a sleeping, um, a sleeping frog. Eventually, I figured out, hey, if I take one of those bears, it frees me over. Because Wario has, like, these weird features. If your character gets frozen, he gets constantly knocked in one direction. And mm. anything that blocks him, unless he hits a wall, uh, it will just kill anything on sight. So I thought maybe I grab a polar bear, knock him over, then shoot me across, and then I was able to knock over the frog. Now, anybody who would have trouble figuring that out, I'm not going to go call them retarded. I'm not going to call them stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to tell well, them, use no, your obviously. brains. What's wrong with you people? God, you're such a snotty ass wipe. <laughs> oh, what, what's that? You can't, you can't figure out, you can't solve for X? Well, I guess you're just retarded. I guess you just have a learning disability. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. I'll make the rules. Yeah, get the fork out of your ass, dude. Jesus. <laughs> you're not tough shit because of that. <laughs> what's the matter? You can't make a rocket that can go to space within the next two days? I guess you just, uh, I guess you're just stupid. I, and yeah, I get, that's just, oh, that's you're not Elon Musk. crumbles. Oh, you're not Elon Musk? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, all of us are Elon Musk, didn't you hear? Like, all of us can make a, a billion dollars in a fucking day. But the big yeah. thing that just, like, completely, like, makes the entire case open and shut is that the developers were not aware. They fucking apologized afterwards, like, oof, yeah, that was an oversight. You know, in the design of that level, in the design of that level, there had to be, like, a couple of people that were, that were coming up with the concept for the barrel... And they were like, this will be fun. Or, or, or it's like, you know, this will be, players will think this is smart. And then nobody got it. And then they were like, maybe we, maybe it, we should backtrack on this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like maybe it's one of those. But like on top of all that, what confuses people is that there's already pre-existing barrels that just move on their own. They just move left to mm -hmm. right. So it's like, okay, we're just going to see it as just its own platform. We're not going to see it as an obstacle you control. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's just, it's its one of the most, like, ridiculous shit ever. And you're right, that never that never happens in Sonic. That never, ever happens in Sonic, it's, where it's, you're, like, in control of something like that. I mean, the only other, um, the only other stage for that was, uh, what's it called, Sky Chase Zone, when you're on, uh, Tails' uh, Tornado 2, his plane. Mm. And you begin to notice it when you're, there's, like, a couple of enemies, and you jump on them, and, oh, he's already moving around. But then, mm -hmm. like, something else comes along, you, feel, you had the instinct to duck and everything, you begin to find out, oh, you have control of Tails. Just, uh, just don't spin dash, because you're just gonna knock yourself into the pit. Yeah. I see a comment in chat, because I finally pulled up your screen right as we were about to leave. But there, somebody in chat said there are so many controllers and they were all dog crap. Listen, I still hold the opinion that the Xbox One controller is probably the best controller that's ever been in my hands. I don't, I'm not a fan of the Xbox. I don't like the Xbox One. I think the Xbox 360 is the best console they'll ever make for a long time. Their controller is pretty good. Golden, have you ever had the fortune of holding an Xbox One controller in your hand? I've actually been using it this whole time on my game streams. Let's go! So he knows but, what I'm talking about. But... Yeah. but. I have a controller that competes with it. What? Tell me. The GameCube controller. You know what? The I... GameCube controller is a weird one because I, when I first saw the GameCube controller, even as a kid, I was like, this is the weirdest looking controller. I had the same thoughts when I saw the Nintendo 64 controller. But then, but then you hold it and you're like, yeah, this works. This works. This works surprisingly well. Because <laughs> the GameCube controller has... All the buttons, despite how unconventional it is, they're all in such convenient places that it just feels right. Yeah, yeah. They, the buttons the buttons look weird, but they're in convenient places. Yeah. 
You have to hold it to get it, basically. Bruh, there are some fucking... I think when video games had, like, when they first started out, nobody knew how the fuck to make a controller. Like, I was watching Scott the Waz, and he was talking about an Atari. Apparently, that was a controller that had a fucking dial on it. I was like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put dials on your controllers. I'm not trying to turn a fucking knob. Just make it a button. Oh, you're talking about the older Atari uh, consoles? Yeah. I've okay, been watching yeah. a lot of Scott the Waz recently, so yeah. No, I, I know what you're talking about. Um... And yeah, like there's uh, there's some like the Atari Twenty Six Hundred was just more or less like um like it was a, a joystick and they had a button on the side. I'm now just yeah. imagining ET on the Atari. That's the only thing that pops into my head because that is like the only title I remember most. There's like so many other titles that I don't know what are looked at as ironclad classics or anything like that. Uh, but I've seen like other ones where they have those knobs and some literally they have. Oh, Wolf had subscribed. Oh, God damn it. Thank you, Z Gamer Girl, oh, for Courtney giving Bright. me the sub. Anyway, Courtney! <laughs> thank you, Courtney. <laughs> also, but back to uh, the Atari or some of the other uh, controllers. Literally, I shit you not, it was a number pad like a phone. Oh, my God. Bruh, when video games started out in their infancy, big they companies went through didn't a, know what they were doing. Yeah, no, they had to go through a lot of trial and error and just assume that maybe joysticks are the best function until eventually mm -hmm. a D-pad was invented by Nintendo for uh, those Game & Watch uh, handhelds and just thought, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe we can put those to use on, like, a controller for a future console. And it was on an NES. And NES <laughs> brought back the gaming uh, industry to it's like high regards compared to like the video game crash in 83 there there's a lot of truth to the statement when video games started out it was a lot of trial and error because a lot of the worst controllers for video games started out like in video games infancy yeah uh, the nes the not the super nintendo the one before that had a pretty iconic controller but the number one complaint about it was that it was like it was like its corners were sharp so, like, it would dig into your palms. Ouch. And yeah, that, that, that was pretty bad. And then for the Super Nintendo, they made the, they made the controller more round, so that wasn't a problem. Oh, yeah, it was a lot more comfortable. And then there's the uh, Sega Genesis one that has, like, a more boomerang shape to it. Yeah, with fucking, like, did six face buttons on it. I was like, all right, this is weird, but this it, works. It first started out with three, but then they had one with, uh, what was it, XYZ? Yeah. Okay, so ask all. Very first console you ever owned, uh, handheld included, go. Uh, SNES. Oh, I think for me it was a Super Nintendo. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was a Super Nintendo for me. God, I... Bro, still to this day, I could play Donkey Kong Country like it's muscle memory. I played that game so much as a uh -oh, kid. Oh, I love that game. I could probably beat that game in like two hours. Yeah, no, I remember like I was so good at that game. And then I stumbled upon the sequel. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> yeah, you know how that turned out. A lot of people said, no. it's better than the first. No. The hit detection's <laughs> awful. Oh my, a lot of people will say the second Donkey Kong Country is better than the first. And the third Donkey Kong Country is a fucking afterthought. Nobody even acknowledges that it has a third <laughs> installment. But, yeah. I didn't know it now, existed. Uh, Super Mario World. Golden has played that before. I, uh, I fucking, like, I murdered that game. Like, I remember as a kid, when I was playing it, I was able to, like, I would spend a whole day playing through the entire world. And nowadays, I was able to just, like, halfway through, I had to, like, call it a night. And the third time I was uh, streaming it, it was an hour long. Um, Jesus. I, like, beat that in, like, an hour. And as for handheld, I would have to default to the Game Boy Color. Um, it's and I'm a, pretty sure every one of us, be, and at least until the Game Boy Advance SP, that all of us struggled with the problem of like being in a well lit enough room to play the Game Boy Color. I know that feeling. <laughs> okay, so my start is a bit of a weird spot between the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. So I first had one of those. They called it the Play It Loud Game Boy. Um, uh, models because they were like there's the original Game Boy design, just the big giant white brick with the uh, red buttons. 
Uh, yeah. But there, ones, there were ones that were like colored green and red and yellow and such. I had a green one with Super Mario Land. It was a frustrating game. But mm-hmm. as I was like, I was eight years old when I got it, but I was developmentally not up to date with my age. So I kind of treated it too carelessly. And my parents mm-hmm. just like withheld it. Like, this is just too much for you. No, um, I like the idea. You can't I, handle it yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like I dropped it a few times. I accidentally toss it around, slipping out of my fingers. It's, I I probably left a good amount of dents on there. Um, I was annoyed that oh you have to change new batteries compared yeah, to yeah, just yeah. like something to plug into a wall. So that started to play in, and they were like, Brett, you play too much of it, and like the bat, like they were spending too much money on the batteries or some shit like that. There's a whole story with that. Um, bro, like I, having a Game Boy, having a Game Boy up until the SP, you had to like, b- like bulk buy batteries in bulk. Like, yes, you had to I buy know. so yeah. many so, batteries. So, um, it wasn't until I was about 11 years old that I had the Game Boy Color with, um, Super Mario Brothers Deluxe and Pokemon Red. And it was one of the best experiences that I've had. Cause like. Uh, it was at a time when my parents were, um, like, we were, like, going on our trip to Las Vegas. Like, every year we would always go to Vegas. Um, mm-hmm. Because as we're in Vegas, like, obviously there's the slot machines. But we were kids. We were too young. But uh, we would have, stay at a hotel called the Monte Carlo. And across the street, um, we called it the GameWorks building. So it's, yeah. a, it's a three-way entrance. It's a three-way tour of, there's a tour on the history of Coke. And another one was a history of M&M's. So there's two little, like, museums. The basement was Gameworks, and it was just a whole arcade. And whenever you registered, like, a card, you had about two hours to play any game you want. Mm, mm. Yeah. So the Game Boy definitely occupied me on the trip to just, like, play whatever it is that I was after. And, of course, I had to angle it in the fucking light. You know, whenever we were, <laughs> yeah, whenever we went under a tunnel, we had to pause, do, 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 and we're just like the two oh. things that like you <laughs> like having a Game Boy Color and and as a kid you ever you like you look back at shit with nostalgia. But one thing I don't miss about the Game Boy Color is being in a car and having it be nighttime and having to wait for the fucking street lights to fucking shine over the car just so I can play any modicum of my game. <laughs> I don't miss that at all. <laughs> so oh, that's, that's that's why, like, I've been, like, so fascinated that nowadays people are able to take their old uh, handhelds and install, like, backlights into them. So that way you could play um, any console under the dark. Mm. Modification. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah. The only, like, mod I've ever been interested in for, like, any handheld... <laughs> Was the uh, apparently uh, not even apparently actually? I think they made a statement about this. The way the the way the Nintendo DS is set up or like made, it doesn't have a USB port, so you can't use it with a capture card. And for the longest time, I was like, "Bro, I want to like capture footage on my Nintendo DS." But the only way to do that is, is that you got like in front of it. Dude, either that or, like, you gotta send it to, like, somebody in, like, China and they'll mod it for you, like, physically mod it. Like, they'll add a USB uh, slot to it. They'll actually, like, put it on there. And I was, the whole time, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I'm not good with mailing. The only thing I've ever mailed was I, I sent Chrissy my old um stream deck. And that's the only thing I've ever sent to anybody ever with my own two bare hands. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> my silly boy <laughs> bro playing mario kart super circuit on the gba pain in the ass at night oh my oh, god what are, you, what are you doing driving at night <laughs> you're in a you're in a freaking you're in a freaking like a superstar circuit Freaking driving around, and then the lights go out, and you're just like, "Oh fuck, I can't see!" <laughs> <laughs> Start crashing into barriers and shit. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You're fine. Uh, let's see what else we have here. So that might have been You, yeah, you, dude, Golden. Did you ever buy like the um the accessory for the um? For the Game Boy Color, where it was actually a physical light, the warm light. 
Yeah, that hung over your fucking uh, yeah, Game Boy? Yeah, no, okay, so... Yeah, it was convenient that they would have a light, like a light source over there. But the caveat was, is that because the screen was so reflective, you could only see parts of the screen. <laughs> oh my god, Nintendo, <laughs> please. Yeah, no, it wasn't until the Game Boy Advanced SP that they would finally, yeah, yeah like up in the, uh, the, at that point, they would have a light source. I'm like, thank you. Ever since I had that, it was like, it was like a little laptop to carry around. So that was cool. So I would just like, yeah. I would go to the bathroom and just to play with just the light itself, I would just turn off the lights and just like, watch the game itself in the dark while I'm taking a massive shit. <laughs> Fucking man. He's just, he's been in there so long, like two hours go by and they're it's like, like, Brett, are you okay? <laughs> Brett, are you okay there? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <sighs> just like <let me laughs> <just, laughs> Oh my god. All right. Uh, the SP, somebody in chat said the SP was a godsend. It yeah, it was. was. It was an absolute having a godsend. Having a rechargeable battery so you could no longer spend. Yeah, like that was $50. the other thing. A rechargeable yeah. battery source so you could plug it in and then play it later. Mwah! Genius. And then, like, the backlight. Those are the two best selling things for the SP. Yeah. Um,. Apparently, well, not even apparently, actually, there was a version of the Game Boy called the Game Boy Light that had a backlight, but it never came out in America. It only came out in, like, the other side of the planet. No, I think it yeah. did come out in America, but it's just very, very minimally, because it came out right around the time when the DS launched. So most people would be... Oh, okay. Yeah. I think what you got that mixed up with is the Game Boy Light, which... Yeah. Oh, wait, is that what you said earlier? Yeah, that's what I said. The Game Boy. Oh, Light. oops! I what did you think I said? I, I got that mixed up with the Game Boy Micro. Oh no, the oh, Game yeah. Boy. Yeah, the Game Boy the Micro came out way thing. later. Yeah, but no, the yeah. Game Boy Light. Yeah, no, that was true. Yeah, it was like it was almost the shape of the Game Boy Pocket, but just slightly bulkier, and it had like a light source that is very reminiscent of like the kind of light you look at a digital watch. Yeah. So it's like it's like a a bright green. Which yeah. has its own charm. Not everybody would like that, but... I'll I see. love how the Game Boy Micro is, like, the size of a goddamn Cheez-It. Like, it is so small. <laughs> but I kind of like that. Yeah, what's even cooler is that you were, like, you would be able to decorate the front panel with, like, different, like, labels and such. Like, it's like making your own wallpaper. Hmm. <laughs> I ended up getting Uno for the DS, and then my auntie got me New Super Mario Brothers. New Super Mario Brothers for the DS. That's where the New Super Mario Brothers saga started. I still now find we're it at weird. like yeah, like I I remember that they called it New Super Mario Brothers, New Super Mario Brothers too. It's like, what are you gonna think of in the next generation? And what do I hear? Newer Super Mario Brothers. Like, what are you gonna think next? Newest. What's going to happen after that? <laughs> no, no, they can't say newest, because then that implies and that's the last in the new series. They have to call it something else. You'd be I surprised. Think... They would probably Where be we... like a new, new, new Super Mario Brothers. Like, they would have to say it twice. The new, newer. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they did that with the DS. Like, my DS is literally called the new... Like, the new uh, uh, DS 2D or whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, God, I remember But I do know those. new is part of the name. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I love my 2DS. My first one broke, and then I had to get another one. I Ugh. still have the 3DS Funny. lying around that was handed to me by Solar when I was at 27 Burning Con. Uh, mm -hmm. 17. Hey. Sorry, 2017. I gotta clarify that. Um... Yeah. I played a little bit of it. I had a Super Mario 3D World. And just on a side note, that's what I was expecting the next gen uh, Super Mario game to be after Mario 64. And what we had was Mario Sunshine. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Where's your like <laughs> conventional, traditional platforming? But what's the matter? Y'all like Flood? Why don't you like Sunshine? Um, Flood is cool. Okay, so I didn't really give the game a chance until in recent times. I'm still mm -hmm. trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do because, like, it, it's so weird. Um, the thing that I really hated is they got rid of the long jump. Uh, which apparently they said, oh, you get uh, uh, this new ability later in the game. It's like, I don't want to wait till later in the game. I want to be able to go places faster because these stages were fucking huge. Yeah, that is correct. 
Yeah, like some of the boss battles, like you have to really strategize and such. And um, it's not too big of a problem. It's just it's it's just a matter of me getting the hang of everything, you know. So I'm not gonna blame anybody for that. But getting rid of the long jump, I thought was just a glaring sin. I'm willing. To, like a part of me thinks that Nintendo probably got rid of it because so many uh, speed runners were using it to their advantage to glitch through games and such. Like you know, you could just polish up your game better. You heard it here first, chat. Golden is going to stream sunshine in the foreseeable future. <sighs> Can you feel the sunshine? A lot of, like, people would want me to stream sunshine anyway. Like, I just, I, I need to get good at it first, because otherwise it's going to be like Mario, uh, not Mario, it's going to be like Sonic Adventure 2 again, where I'm like, oh my god, what am I supposed to do? And other people there have to are... like... Go ahead. There are a couple of, like, uh, uh, missions... Uh, can I call them missions? There are, yeah. There are a couple of missions to get the sprite where it's like, the game doesn't tell you what to do. And there are situations where it's like, how is the fuck was I ever supposed to figure this out at all? I, uh, so I, I agree with you. Yeah, no, that's the kind of shit that drove me nuts. Like, I experienced that shit with Mass Effect and Majora's Mask and Kingdom Hearts. And every time mm -hmm. I mentioned them, you know what they said? The game's not going to hold your hand. You had to think. I don't want to think. I want to enjoy a game. <laughs> I don't want to think. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Listen, man, when I want to play a video game, I want my head to be empty and just inject the endorphins into my fucking brainstem. That's all <laughs> I want. That's all I want in my video game. But apparently I've like, I started to realize over the years and like, I, I, I had to snap myself into that sometimes because I go into that tirade of, oh, I hate it when this shit is cryptic and all that shit. And mm. I, a part of me still has that. And I've shown a bit of it when I was streaming Sonic Adventure 2. But I've noticed that in a lot of games, like, no matter how good of a level design you can make, and I'm not saying this as, like, a way of letting your guard down, but it's um, that no matter what, some people are going to get stuck on something. And I think that's the reason why Nintendo allowed, like, Nintendo Power and a lot of strategy guides and such. Like, okay, you're stuck here, just read this book here and such. Like, they would have to do it afterwards, because they don't know if anybody is going to get stuck in something. If I want to think, I'll read a book. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, but uh, I want to see Golden react to the dreaded pachinko machine. I think they're just saying that, because famously in the Game Grumps, that's one of the Game Grumps' best moments where Aaron was playing Sunshine. And then he was an inch away from getting a star in the pachinko machine level. And Wait then a just minute. Fucking... Is that the oh, fucking pinball one? Wait, the pinball... Wait, uh, describe it to me, because it's a pachinko machine, it's not a pinball machine. Well, you you go up this one, th uh, this one, uh, this one spring, and there's, like, a couple of levels that you have to, like, carefully work with, and you have to go down, like, a series of, uh, you have to, like, really work your way into bouncing from one object to another, like, a ping machine or something like that? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's called a pachinko machine, but I think we're talking about the same thing, yeah? Did you see it? Did you see him almost get the star and then fuck it up somehow? Hang on. Um, Sunshine Pachinko. Yeah, I, I would mix that up with a pinball, but you have to be so precise at where you would land. Um, yeah. And damn, I, I remember seeing Game Grumps and um, hearing Aaron lose his shit. I mean, he that there's a lot of times where Aaron gets mad, and I'm like, bruh, you, there's no reason for you to get mad at this. But that one instance, I was like, the game fucked you. The game royally fucked you on this. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand your anger. You have every right to be mad at this. Because he was right over the star. But for some reason, the way the level is set up, it, it didn't register. So he just got, like, slid back and forth, and then they, the game threw him out of the level. That was so shitty. <laughs> uh, Let's talk about the. Uh, I just, uh, I just want to make it clear that I don't hate Mario Sunshine. I just had just a bitter history with it, and apparently a lot of other people had the same issue I did. Like, why isn't it like what Mario sixty four was? Because I thought it was going to be another uh, like installment like Mario sixty four, but out in the Mushroom Kingdom. Because in mm. Mario 64, you're directly inside Peach's castle with a series of, like, surreal <laughs> images that are for stages. Like, what about out in the world, being in Bowser's castle and everything? Nope. That never happened. So Mario oh, so you so you had, like, anticipations for the next, like, 3D Mario game before, like, Nintendo even announced what it was going to be. 
because Sunshine was like, oh, Mario and Peach are going on vacation to Delfino Island. This doesn't take place in the fucking uh, Mushroom Kingdom, you idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because, like, I, I mean, I was, I was, I was expecting, like, I would, yeah, because I would think that they would do something a little more. And with the enhanced graphics on the GameCube, it's like, dude, that's a perfect opportunity right there. Little did I know, oh, they took a dramatically different route. Oh, okay. And they took another dramatic route with the Mario Galaxy and shit. And there's Mario Odyssey and everything. Um, again, I'm not trying to bash the games. It's just my like my expectation was dramatically different. Um, and apparently the GameCube was just that period where they were playing a lot of experiments with their franchises like wind waker had a much more cartoonish sort of feel to it and a lot of people turned it down because it looked cartoonish and not adult or dark or scary like majora's mask or ocarina even of Time. though even though literally when you look at the game at the plot of uh wind waker oh look fucking um the entire land of hyrule is flooded yeah, yeah. no it was it's 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 zelda meets water world Bro, that but was the good. problem that um that was the problem before they announced um Wind Waker and then they showed that tech demo that made Zelda I mean not Zelda Link look like um he was in Twilight Princess but nobody heard of like Wind Waker yet so when they released Wind Waker they was like what the fuck is this we want a dark more realistic grittier Zelda yeah so because, they were like yeah yeah. They, they were like, oh, they're fucking, you want a gritty Zelda? All right, here's Twilight Princess. And then they released Twilight Princess, and here's my statement. I think Wind Waker is so much more fun than Twilight Princess. I like Twilight Princess. You would think that I would love Twilight Princess because I could turn into a wolf. I No. I think I, I think that um the Wind Waker is a lot more entertaining than Twilight Princess. That's fine. Um, I think it's... Turning... I, I think uh, Twilight Princess is Ellie's favorite entry of... Um... Uh, Zelda. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, I didn't find out until afterwards she also hated Majora's Mask, but she was helping me through a lot of things, and that was just the other thing that made my experience with the Majora's Mask sour. Like, bro, you're not supposed to do that. Well, how <laughs> nice of the game to not tell me that? It was an option, and I went for it. You know, where it's supposed to be yeah. a game where it's open world, and you think for yourself out of your own free will. Hmm. Uh. So, but yeah, uh, I will say the dark nature of Majora's Mask is fantastic. Like, I was feeling beyond uncomfortable with how, like, okay, so you have that puppeteer guy. He's, like, he's having, like, dramatically different poses whenever you go to, like, the next message in the dialogue box. It's like, holy shit, dude. It's like... You mean, in, the, it, it's, you, it's like you mean the mask salesman? Yeah, it's like you're in a bad fever dream or something. It's like one second, all of a sudden, boop, a jump cut to the next. It's so weird and creepy. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, Majora's Mask is a lot darker than Ocarina of Time. It's practically <laughs> the darkest entry on all of Zelda games, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, look at this. The fucking... As soon as you get into the game, uh, the main antagonist is like, Hey, I'm using this uh, mask to make the moon crash into the sun. Also, if you look up at the moon, the moon has like a I, really weird face on it for some reason. It's like, what the uh, fuck is happening? There was a lot of terrifying shit in there. <laughs> Is there any wonder why the creator, uh, why the guy who did the Ben Drown series literally went, yeah, this could make for a good creepypasta, or ARG, if you will. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> also, one little tidbit about the moon having that very disturbing grimacing face. Apparently, the, that's, that face is because it's in pain. Uh, it's in pain? Uh, but because, because it's probably being pulled down to, like, the Times Square and it's like, this hurts, this doesn't feel good. <laughs> I now just imagine yep. the kid who stole the mask. I keep forgetting his name. I now just Skull ima kid. Yeah, I now imagine that the skull kid is using, like, some kind of, like, tele telekinetic lasso. Just, like, come down here and come crash with us and die. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, now you see that face. It's, like, it's screaming eternally. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> they made it, and the worst part is when they did release the remake, it was far more creepier. Oh really? I have the re I have the remake on my um two D S. Three D S? Oh nice. Yeah, three D S, two D S, whatever. <laughs> yeah. They just they just updated the graphics. That's all they really did. And made the game yeah. like more um accessible to play on the DS. And that's about it. I mean fair. 
Those games are gonna. Those games are classic games. They're gonna go down in history. I mean, yeah. Yes. Um, watch like in like the next generation, people are gonna look at SNES games or other generation games and say that those were bad designs because of what Frost said about NES designs. Like, oh, level design wasn't a thing back then. Uh, he what? um yeah, because like part of his argument, like I'm not. I'm not going to, like, disagree with him on everything. I know where he's coming from. Like, for instance, in the old NES games, if you, let's say, make some progress in the game and you run out of lives, you have to start the whole game over. Like, that's a slap in the face. That's a kick in the nads. Well, that was yeah. around the era where, like, the old, like, most games were platformers. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're platformers or the soul whereabouts or run and gun and such. But the very mm. fact that you had to like would probably have to like replay the stages over and over to the point where it just you just get bored with it, and you just don't mm. want to like you don't care anymore. Uh, there's a point to all that because it's restraint like it's yeah it's restraining your resources to identify with the obstacles to get better at the game. Like you have to make all this progress again just to get up to that point and identify it before you die again. Like there's a re like a repetitive nature to that. Uh, but again, you know, this was just a thing back in the 80s where, yeah, they would have some, like, cheap enemy placements, like, especially in arcade games, because they would do that to steal your quarters. And she's like, oh, you died here, you better put in another quarter or it's game over. <laughs> yeah, no, I think money, man. Yeah, no, I rem I, I'm, I'm now remem uh, remembering that scene from Wayne's World where a guy was talking about a certain game, like a gelatinous cube or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he says, like, the problem is that most kids are not going to be able to beat the first stage. So now they're coughing up quarters. It's like, wow, you're, you're, like, you're a dick. But companies care about money, so they have to, you know, work with that somehow. You know what one game was where it was like, it was like a hard game, but it's still like, you still played it religiously. Or at least that's what I heard said about the game. I even had the game and I was like, yo, this game is super fun. But I die in the first level every time. Contra three. Oh God. Contra three. Contra yeah. three. Oh God. no! You I, get I hit have... once. That's it, dude. Like, okay, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, so my brother and I would always play that game when we make, uh, would make a lot of progress. Little do we realize we have to play the game twice for a oh, high, like a harder difficulty. You know, it's one of those type of games. So. The funny thing is, is that I grew up playing the game knowing very well that a one shot will kill you. All right, just take your maneuvers a lot more seriously. You would get better mm -hmm. at it over time. But even replaying the first stage, it's still like, you know, it's something worth coming back to. Um, mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, is that I remember hearing about the first Contra game saying that, oh, you only have three lives. And it's got that same mechanic where one shot kills you and everything. You're bound to die very quickly and everything. Some people found Contra 3 harder than the first game. And I'm like, I don't know if I agree with that. Because I was able to make I've a lot I've never played of the first Contra. You're, you're going to get your ass handed to you. I'm just going to say that much. <laughs> Would anyone play Ghosts and Goblins or the sequel Super Ghouls and Ghosts? Okay. I, for a long time, wanted to stream Super Ghouls and Ghosts, but I wanted to make the right time to do it because... I remember as a kid, my brother and I could barely make any progress in that game um, because the game's fucking ass hard. Um, mm -hmm. he, he was able to make it through like the third stage and then he gave up. But I remembered it and it was just like, it was buried into my head because the game would constantly tease you with here's the map, here's how far you have to go. It shows that every time you died. So part of me is thinking like, was this game designed to tease you? Or is there a way to actually... Now, no, not now, not ever. <laughs> so, no, hold on, let me finish, uh, David 80s. Like, many, many years back, when I was still, like, fairly new in the fandom, I thought, you know, with save states and everything, I want to see what the rest of Super Ghouls and Ghosts was. And mm. I, I cheesed my way through with using save states just to get across. And I was engaged in seeing what they would hold. As time would go on, I would play the game again just for, like, shits and giggles. And, like, when I least expected, I was able to just blast through the game. Mm. Because, like, I would also realize that even though you get your ass kicked a lot, there's um there's a strategy you develop. Like, if there's long gaps you have to make uh, progress through, you can mm. do double jumps. 
So the game expects you to work with that. The game kind of expects you to look for treasure chests and upgrade your armor and everything. And I was starting to put the pieces together. So it just, it felt rewarding being able to like master that game so much better. The only time I cannot make any progress is when you have to play the game again because you have to play it twice. The second time you have what they call the goddess's bracelet. Um, and okay. you're taking on the final uh, boss. You have to use that weapon, and it sucks ass. And mind you, you can only get hit like once or twice. So you have to have mad reflexes, and I can never get past that. Mm, sounds frustrating. It is. Um, mm. Like, I would have to show it to you, but I'd rather not right now. But ever since that then, that sounds like a game that you should save for like Halloween times. It like I've been doing that at the same time for many years. I wanted to review that game and share information to other people. Here's how you play through this game because I'm like cracking the code. Hmm. Magical Star, your guess is as good as mine. Some companies are brutal like that. But it's it's been very very well known in Ghosts and Goblins. You have to play the game twice to get the full ending. Oh it's, god, yeah. It's easier than the prequel. You ought to play it's bad. The prequel? Are you talking about Ghosts and Goblins? Like the original arcade game? Because yeah, you're gonna get your ass handed to you. I could barely make progress on the second stage. I can't wait for Golden to play Mario Super Superstar Saga. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's a milestone I have there. I think it's at five hundred? I gotta wait until it comes back again. Like, I'm... Like, I've had those milestones sit there for a while. Somebody was so eager in wanting me to play Shovel Knight. Like, I hear it's a good game. I played a little bit of it. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. a good game. It's just that I already have, like, pre-planned titles on what kind of highlight reels I want to make because now I'm focused on making them more... Uh, what is it? More thematic. Like, one yeah. heavily based off of, like, just playing 3D games the first time. One is based off of playing DOS games. Um, mm. rather get him to 500 you know the $500 would actually help me get new tires <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I don't want to talk too much about that okay yeah Shovel Knight is at 400 and 500 is Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga um, yeah. some of these games I would have to save for next year because I've already got like a couple of titles planned for this year um, yeah. someone get this game it. Superstar Saga <laughs> I think I have the ROM for it somewhere. I still have yet to get the uh, physical cartridge for it. It's probably a really pricey one because all the retro games are priced up like crazy. Nostalgia sells. <laughs> Bro, like, I've been playing Superstar Saga, and ever since I've been playing Superstar Saga, I am falling in love with Bowser as a character. I wish, bro, it's reached a point now where it's like, I want Bowser to have his own game. I want to play as Bowser trying to get Mario. Where's that game, Nintendo? <laughs> I, would, I would buy the shit out of that. I mean, there's, I mean already, there's already like a game series based off of Wario, who was first a villain and now just like an anti-hero or some shit like that. Yeah, but it Wario was... eats onions and farts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know it's true. It is true. It would be. I mean, it would be nice if they just decided to make a spinoff game. It doesn't have to even be canon of just Bowser going on an adventure. I mean, if they're able to do Super Princess Peach, why the fuck shouldn't they do Super Bowser, I guess, if you would call Did it Did you that. know oh, that on, the one on. of the... Yeah? I'm looking at the chat. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, there's Bowser's Inside Story. I think that's on the uh, the DS. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have I have Bowser's Inside Story, but I want a fully fleshed out story game where you play as only Bowser and the main objective is trying to squash Mario. Obviously, at the end, you lose because you're Bowser, but I would just, I want to see more of Bowser's character is what I'm saying. I love Bowser as a character <laughs> and the way he interacts with the, like, the characters around him. Um, but what were we talking about before this? I was going to say something. <laughs> we were all over the place in regards to games. I'm trying to read the chat, trying to get my freaking memory back. Help. <laughs> Help. Brain fart, brain Hello. fart, brain fart, brain what fart. What were we talking about before we started talking about Bowser's Inside Story? Uh, I'm trying to remember. God damn it, we're idiots. <laughs> we're not idiots, we just lose track of shit. <laughs> Hun, why are we so dumb? 
You are not dumb, you just lost track. Yeah, it all happens, I, yeah. I, I don't believe either of you. <laughs> I'm going to... Wolfhead, I'm going to squish you. Alright, uh... Oh, it was something about it was something about Shuffle Knight, wasn't it? No, it wasn't Shuffle Knight. It guns ghoul ghouls of ghosts. Was I going to say something about Mar Wario? I no, think I wasn't so. going to say anything about Wario. No, you were suggest no, I... you were suggesting having um, a spinoff title for like Bowser and everything. Bowser. Yeah, I did say that I would love that. I would love to play as Bowser in a full fledged like story like RPG. <laughs> I'm going to pinch you, Wolfhead. You pinch me constantly. It's adorable. And we were I talking see. about Wario games and how he's yeah. gross. Yeah. Yeah, Wario. What, dude? There. Every time I see Wario, it's in a WarioWare game. Those aren't. Those aren't story games. Those are like collections of mini games that it's like, oh. Wario and his friends are doing a thing. Oh, now you're playing as this dude with the blue afro. Tap this button to pass to the next stage. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. That's just like, come on, man, really? No, I'm not shitting on WarioWare, because I think WarioWare can produce some really fun games. I have a couple of WarioWare games. Okay, I'll I think they that. can be fun. I remember. But, like, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying they'll never make another game like Wario Land, where you actually play as Wario and you go on an adventure. Yeah, and I'm you, just... like, yeah, Wario Land still counts as his own state. I mean, yeah, uh, something I remember in regards to WarioWare, the, um... I remember that in Smash Brothers Brawl, there was a stage of that, and I fucking hated it. Because some of them involves, <laughs> like, you had to abide to whatever the obstacle was, like, incoming this for hazard reasons. One of which is, yeah. like, oh, you have to stand still. Like, it's so distracting when you're trying to fight. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not the worst stage, though. To me, I think the worst stage in Smash Brothers Brawl, and I'm saying Brawl specifically, were... The old, old retro games, like, what was it? The the Mario Brothers Arcade? Because there's, like, a bunch of enemies left to right. You're bouncing back and forth like a pinball. It's like, you can't fight in that stage. There's also one imagine, that's based off of Donkey Kong. Go ahead. Imagine if the developers gave Waluigi his own game. Bro, I'll fucking take it. I was playing as Waluigi in the new... Mario Strikers game, which a lot of people say is bad, but I think the only reason they say it's bad is because a lot of them play the GameCube version. I didn't play the GameCube version. Apparently the GameCube version is a lot more hectic than the new one, and that's why they like it. I never played the GameCube version. I have nothing to compare it to, so I think it's good by default. Anyway, <laughs> give me a, a Waluigi game. I got the premise for you right now. Waluigi is a lover boy. He he's always carrying a rose in his mouth for some reason. Make it make it that Waluigi has to get to a date, and that he just he just goes on an adventure trying to get it, trying to get to his date. Hun. And he and he and he befriends Wario along the way. Wario is a side character. <clears throat> Hun, yes. Don't ever say the word to lover boy because I cannot th I cannot think of that of that fucking <laughs> word of those two words. Without cringing and remembering the goddamn Drake album. <laughs> what oh, he made? God, that fucking, dude. That fucking album art where it's just like pregnant women no, emojis. No, 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 no. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. I laughed so hard when I saw that shit. People make fun of Kanye's Donda cover having just a black screen, just being a black cover, but at least it's something compared to pregnant emojis. <laughs> I love that shit. Oh my Horrible. god, dude. Like, <laughs> I can't even. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm. What's the matter? You don't want to get Waluigi pregnant? Wait, what? That's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> anyway. All right, I think it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> Go. All right, goodbye, everybody. Yeah, have a good night. Good night, y'all. <laughs>